Right, hello again, another tutorial. This time I want you to please pay very very keen attention because I'm, co I'm going to explain something or rather I'm going to try and explain something which confuses a lot of people. Named graphs. What I want you to remember before explaining this is the following. Remember in the previous videos that we explained and we agreed that any triple data set or any collection of triples is essentially a graph. Uh, usually it's called or named RDF graph but it's essentially a graph of uh, uh, vertices and, on, and edges, yes, vertices or nodes and edges and we explain that when we have, when we have a triple uh, we have a subject, predicate and object and we said the subject and object are uh, nodes and um, the predicate can be the edge linking uh, that couple of, the, of those two uh, uh, nodes, the, uh, the subject and the object. Now, what we haven't maybe mentioned before, I'm sure we have, but um, what we want to mention again now is that multiple graphs or multiple triple data sets, you know, multiple RDF triples or, you know, sets multiple tri multiple sets of RDF triples, anyway, uh, multiple triple data sets or multiple RDF graphs can be actually merged together into one graph. If you remember when we added, when we uploaded uh, some RDF data, some turtle files, for example, in previous videos, of course, to uh, you know our Jena Foseki server, when we create that DS temporary data set and we up, uh, allowed uh, uploading, we maybe haven't mentioned that you know if you look at look you know at, at the form here, when you know we chose our data set, uh, we when we uploaded, we chose the file. We didn't mention this part of the upload form here, uh, the apply that uh, the part that says graph default. What this is saying is that if we upload multiple files, all of them will be joined, will be merged together, and become one big graph called you know default graph. And whenever we run any queries against it, we will be running queries against that big graph. So for example, if we apply, oh, I'm sorry, if we upload ten turtle files, for example. Or of course, you know any RDF files, ten uh, RDF files, ten datasets, and then we do uh, select star from you know the, the the simple query that that chooses or that selects everything. That query will return all the triples in all of those datasets. Why? Because they are merged automatically into one default graph. I not say it says graph. So as we said before, we agree that any triple dataset is actually a graph. Right. Now. Not only through the Jena Foseki server, but if you remember from the previous videos, I think the uh, the last two videos we used the from keyword, and we mentioned that from key using the from keyword we can actually specify the data set we we are querying, and we can use it to specify even remote data sets. You know, data sets sit sitting on, for example, online servers, as we saw when we used the example from the, the book that we are using. Now, even through the from keyword, we can actually uh, specify more than one data set and what happens is when we, we, we when we do that uh, um, automatically the, the data sets we, we provide will be joined together in one default graph again so remember these you know the the idea of of the triples and the idea of that they are actually essentially a graph and then multiple graphs or multiple triple data sets when they are joined they are joined in one one default uh, graph, you know. So, so again, here, just we're saying that the, uh, okay, data sets we we specify, they are usually added together to form what is called a default graph. Now, before continuing to point five, points five, six, and seven, let's run a, a simple example and remind ourselves of how things work. Now, let me just show you data sets first, and then we take it from there. So we, here we have two data sets from the book. Uh, the first one about people. Uh, the first name, last name, and emails. Three people, and then courses, and then which courses those people are taking. Uh, and this is example 069.ttl. The other example, or the other data set, is ex122.ttl. And again, it's actually uh, giving us just people, you know, their details, their detail, like first name, last name, and uh, email addresses. We don't have here courses. Now, we have a simple query here. I've modified this and I'll take it back to its original form uh, shortly. Uh, I'll, just undo, I'll just undo the changes that I did to it. Now, this simple query here, what it does is it just selects email. As you can see, select email where uh, we have a, a temporary variable subject or S. And then we want 
everything that has the uh, property or the predicate uh, email and then we will return it into a variable called email and then we will display it so if we run this against this file uh, this data set we will get these three emails and if we run it against this we will get these two emails enough talking let's see what happens when we run it so uh, what I'm doing here I'm running it against ex069 uh, and what happens is I get three emails as we said before these emails here this this and this and then I'm gonna run it against ex22 and I will get this uh, I'm sorry 122 I think yeah ex122 and I will get the other two emails now what I can do is I can run the query against the two data sets by saying minus minus data again not so I'll have two minus minus data now and then the other one was ex069 run it and I get you know a list of all the emails from the two data sets now as you can see I'm querying the two data sets at the same time and wh what happens now is these two data sets or these two RDF graphs as we agreed before they are joined together in one default graph as we explained here right I can actually as we explained before we can actually do that even from the uh, query itself we can use the from keyword let me just undo my changes from keyword and quickly if I just query one of them of course we don't have to specify data now data file or data set I can run it as you can see it gives me three emails because I run run against ex uh, 09 069 if I do it against 122 I get two emails as you can see and then if I do it against the uh, two data sets again they will be joined into one default graph default graph and I will get of course uh, the five emails I hope this makes sense this is just a quick revision of what, what, what we did before now re what if we for example join uh, or use let's say 50 or 100 data sets now one important issue that often arises is is what if we want to identify the source or origin of of some data you know the provenance what if we want to know where the data has come from where those triples the results that we get where did they come from which graph or which source file or which source source in general they did actually come from and that turns out in our case as we see here is quite difficult we can for example from one data set if we know the predicates we can for example retrieve all you know the triples that have the same predicate or the same object or I'm sorry on the same subject or the same object that's that's not too difficult but to space or to get back or to retrieve the origin where we got that data from for example you know for historical uh, records that is not p p uh, possible at the current state and this is where the idea of the name named graphs come from so we can give whenever we actually join uh, uh, some some RDF graphs together or we when, whenever we query some other RDF graphs together we can actually give them names so we can actually specify whenever we want where some data is coming from and we can actually identify the source of that data so simply the idea of uh, named, uh, named graphs is just a convenient mechanism of partitioning as we can say a triple store i.e. a triple data set or where the, 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 the sets are stored uh, so we can store uh, you know many independent but you know possibly uh, rated graphs in, in, a, in, in a triple store and the convenience is coming from the fact that you know the names of the name uh, gra named graphs are actually URIs so we can give them names and these names are actually URIs what happens is we can actually refer to these URIs in our RDF statements so we just give our graphs or our uh, data sets you know our uh, sets of triples we can give them names and then we can query them using those names and these names remember this these names these graph names are usually URIs i.e. they can be a path to a file on our local disks or they can be for example a web address you know pointing towards something that is actually online and remember that you know, when, we, when we explained you arise before we said there, there might or might not be anything actually online there so these names are URIs they can be a path to a file or 
a web address as we explained before I'm sorry I keep repeating myself just to actually make sure that the point is clear now I'm going to stop here and I'm going to continue hopefully uh, with uh, uh, an example I'm go in the next video I'm going to continue what exactly named graphs are and what their uh, benefits are and why they are useful thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time